guys welcome back to the channel thanks for everyone tuning back in today we'll be wrapping up our turbo manifold and downpipes and all that stuff so we can on the next video install the odyssey fab twin scroll sidewinder kit on the evo 10 um, as you can see transmission from the last video is back in the car everything hooked up all the suspension back together even the under trays on so uh, i did keep off the front bumper though just to get a little more uh, clearance so when i'm reaching back there to put this turbo kit on next but jumping right over here, long way waited, we got our brand new turbo manifold from Odyssey Fab. Uh, super nice manifold. I've been running their first version of this for two years. Uh, and with all this down, I decided to upgrade to their newest version, uh, which just runs a little better. I had no problem with the last one, but I did want to upgrade, so I went ahead and did it. As you can see, we do have a couple of these things already wrapped in the background here, so this video is not going to be like an hour long. I'm just going to show you the exact technique and what you guys need to do to wrap up anything. Um, and this I thought was a pretty good example with some of the bends in here. So we'll get uh, straight into this and uh, see what's up. All right, so first things first is you're going to want to check out what kind of tools you need, which is just going to be a need pair of scissors, some needle nose pliers, which you'll be using to tighten up your metal cable zip ties. These are like cable ties. You can buy these at AutoZone or a place like that, but they're a little expensive because they come in like a 10 pack for not a good price. So I bought mine off of eBay now. So if you have an opportunity, I would do that instead of buy like a 50 pack of them. Uh, they're still like the same quality, good to go. Also, you're gonna have to choose what kind of fiberglass wrap you're gonna want. Most of these are fiberglass wraps. This is actually the DEI titanium uh, lava infused wrap, which is known to do 200 to 300 degrees uh, better radiation control. Uh, over the regular fiberglass wrap and you also don't have to get this stuff wet You just wrap it up and after it heats up it like bonds onto it Those scientists better check your hypotenuses dude. Oh god So uh, I definitely went with this just like I did for the last two years I had it on the other one also this stuff lasts for uh, five to six years opposed to the others lasting two to four years uh, So it's a little bit uh, better for longevity, too. All right, so starting off right here, as you can see, I got a couple of pieces laid out. I'll go ahead and uh, we'll move this dump tube out for the second piece that we'll do. We'll do one of the runners first. All right, so we'll work on this crazy runner up top that has a bunch of different curves in it. Uh, as you can see, I do have long sleeves and gloves on because this stuff with the fiberglass-like stuff that's in it, it gets all over you. It will make you itch like crazy, so definitely just cover this up even if it's hot outside. It's totally worth it to sweat it out opposed to being itchy for days with this, literally days. So uh, don't regret that. So first things first, you're going to go ahead and grab your wrap. You're going to see on this uh, specific wrap that one side is kind of uh, knitted on top. It's kind of like sewn really nice and tight. And the other side is kind of loose. So the part that's really nice and tight is the part that you're going to be keeping towards the collector, which is the side that you start on. So the part that is sewn on the top nice and tight stays towards the collector. This is a two inch wrap thick or you know two inches across right here. The general rule of thumb is to do a quarter inch overlap on each of those. Not more than a quarter inch overlap because you don't want too much heat getting trapped in there. Um, so quarter inch overlap as best as you can do. You'll see me go around these bends. It's a little difficult sometimes to get around them. But as long as you can keep that quarter inch on the outside of each of the bends, you should be good to go and it'll be well uh, protected with the heat. So there's a couple different ways you can do this. You can just have a bunch of long pieces, but obviously you're gonna have to cut this two size first. So <clears throat> what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna wrap it over just like one time like this, just to see. You start here and then you go up that, give about a quarter inch and then two, then you'll go up and it'll be by three and four, five, six, seven, eight, and about nine. So it's about nine, but with all these crazy curves, definitely give yourself a little more room. So I'm gonna count that as like an 11 and cut myself an 11 length for it. Uh, just to wrap it up though, you're gonna wanna go like this and you're gonna wanna cover it up like that and see where it overlays and then take that portion out right there. And as you can see how long that is, that's how long it took to make just one rotation, actual rotation instead of just measuring it. So I'm gonna take that and times that by 11 and then I'll cut that off and it should be a good uh, portion for this top runner.
All right, so that's 11 right there. So I'll take my scissors now. I'll hold that nice and tight. Clipping right across it. The edge does come across sometimes, so you'll just be having to tr trim this a little bit once in a while. So now remembering that your sewn part on the inside is the part that's gonna go towards the top of the collector. That's how you're gonna actually start it. So I'll flip this thing around so you guys can get a little bit closer look at this. All right, so as you can see, it's all flipped around for us now. Uh, you're gonna take your seam that is a little tighter knitted on the top right there, and you're gonna take this, and you're just gonna run this over the top. Psych, let me run under the bottom to give a better example for you so you can see it better. All right, so again, tight portion right there. As you can see, you'll start getting little scraggles like this. So have your scissors handy and clip that little eighth inch, quarter inch away from the edge there. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna quarter this over just like this, fold it over like this. And you're gonna be overlapping coming backwards. So you're gonna actually make a little gap here. Let's say starting right there. And you're gonna overlap coming backwards, holding this in place. And now you're gonna tuck it up under there and the extra part you'll wrap again. So you're basically anchoring it to this by itself, on itself. So again, the little portion pulled over like that, you give it a little bit away from the runner, you half overlap it this way, and then when you come back down around, you'll overlap it on the outside of it, holding the other portion on the bottom that you folded over. What we do here is go back, 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 back. As you guys can see, I tried to keep a quarter inch on the back sides and all of the corners, despite sometimes you overlap it a little bit more just because they're on, on a bend. But all the way down, when you get to this extra portion, as you can see, I got a little extra slack, which I'm glad now that I cut a little over the top that I needed. Uh, you're going to take this and with a little extra slack, you're going to cut this. We're going to do the quarter turn, fold it down on there just like we started the first one. And then we're going to take one of our cable ties and we'll tie this thing up. <laughs> Now, as you got the cable tie on, you're trying to tie it down with one hand. You just try to keep it as tight as possible, real, real tight. Now, after I cut them off like I did, as you can see, I like to give it a little extra slack so you can grab it and curl it over a little bit because if not it will be nice and sticky and it'll cut your hands up when you're trying to install this all right perfect now setting over your turbo manifold which by the way a little detail we did get this poured and polished in the inside right there so that came out pretty nice uh, we'll be doing the other runner in a second, but as I just said, we do have now the other dump tube for the wastegate over here uh, we already wrapped up this other one obviously right here uh, and as well as the downpipe, as you can see, we just did the same deal where you just overlap it like we'll do this one in a second. And I did the other runner, overlap it, bringing it all the way down. And we just wrapped this up beautifully, holding it super, super tight the whole way. So let's go ahead and grab our reel here. We'll go ahead and take a seat and we will get this thing wrapped up. All right, with just one runner left on the turbo manifold, downpipe, other dump tubes already done. We just have this last dump tube and then we'll get straight to doing that turbo kit install, which I'm super pumped about getting done. So. Uh, same thing here is if you want, you can do the measurement all the way down and then you can cut to uh, like that. Instead of wasting any, any slack though, this reel is really small. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it and I'm just gonna wrap it three or four times around this just to get the beginning anchoring down. And then after that, I'll just by hand bring this thing around with the slack I need as I need because it's so light and you can pick it up. So uh, uh, yeah, that's how I'm doing it. All right, so that anchor took me a little bit more to get this going around this bend right at the gate. 
So a um, little advice though is you have to hold it super, super tight as you're pulling this thing down. If you're not pulling it really, really tight, it'll spin and you'll see it going down. So if that is doing it on you, uh, the issue is, is you're literally not just pulling it super tight at the very beginning, holding over that little flap under it as you overlap it. You just need to hold it really tight to get it going. And as you can see, I mean this one, I can pull on as tight as I want to. What you need to do for each of the layers uh, and it's not moving at all. So uh, take your time with that. It might be a little frustrating, but just, uh, yeah, take your time. And as you can see, I'm just able to pull some slack out, putting this on my lap, and I'm just swiveling it around, literally spinning it. About a quarter inch gap all the way around we get down to the bottom. All right, so I'm pretty much on the bottom. So now I'm just going to take the extra slack here, cut it like we did the last one. Grab your uh, cables and tie, and same deal. Do your little fold over and overlap it pulling it as tight as possible before you put the tie on and then tightening the tie as tight as possible. Again, curling it in after you clip it off and that's that. All the way up and down and that's it. All right, and that is that. As you guys can see, everything's all wrapped up here. Perfect seamless on the edges and cable tied all the way around with them all clipped down and zipped up. I hope this didn't answer any questions about getting this done yourself if you wanted to do something like this. As promised, next video, as you can see, I got everything laid out here, turbo, all the charge piping, everything. We're gonna be installing this turbo kit on the Evo 10 in this next video, so please hit subscribe so you guys can see all that future content, including the next video and beyond. And if you did like this video today, please hit the like button and show some support. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. As always, comment in the section below if you have anything to say, and uh, we'll see you in the next video.